I think the the next division, the NFC North, which is another division that you like, this is the division that has some of the the oldest teams in it, right? There's a lot of standing rivalries there. But I think when you talk about expectations, Dan Campbell and the Lions, man, this is the year where they're going to have expectations on them. They are no longer ascending. They have arrived. And now can they stay there? And that is really hard to do for teams and franchises like that that are not used to consistent winning. But I do feel like Dan Campbell is the guy who, as we said last year, he's going to do it the way he knows how, the way that has worked, and he's going to stick to his gun. So he is going to live or die by his gut feeling and what he thinks is the right thing to do. And if you want to stay consistent in winning, you need a guy who is willing to put himself out there, make the tough decision. And Dan Campbell is that guy, and the players love him. So I would not be surprised if the Lions are contenders again this year, but something to watch out for. Yeah, so the NFC North is the the local division uh, for me, being in Central Illinois. So obviously, a lot of a lot of Packers Bears rivalry talk um, exists. I think, uh, and yeah, you're local to the AFC and NFC East, both. Or maybe more so AFC North. You're kind of in the middle of a few divisions, I guess, where they overlap. Yes. But um, yeah, I think when it comes to the Lions, you know, is is uh, is MCDC is he is he going to be Nick Sirianni, or is he going to be the type of guy that has some staying power that can establish himself in his culture and uh, that th- that's going to transcend, you know, over time and you know to be determined. But I think that it's uh, for those uh, those folks out there who yearn for the days of the past and the hard nosed NFL. You gotta you're probably rooting for a guy like Dan Campbell and his ways to um, you know, sort of keep that you know, grit alive a little bit and you gotta, it's hard to not root for the guy because you know, I mean, cause you, a lot of coaches don't show emotion, right? They're very stoic and robotic. Yeah. It's hard to not root for a guy that you see that it's very, I mean, very apparent that he cares a lot um, about his team and about winning. And it's tough not to get behind a guy like that, man. Like, so unless you are so you're someone that's a fan of a team, that's a rival, of the Lions, uh, tough not to get behind him. And I'm going to be in his corner again this year. Uh, really looking forward to it. And as far as the rest of the North goes, you know, Jordan Love and Green Bay, I think they're looking pretty good. Um, I think J.J. McCarthy got hurt, yeah, I he's believe. Out for the year. So he's yeah. out for the season in Minnesota. Yep. And I, I was Caleb Williams. I was critical of him um, coming out of USC. Not high on him, but I've heard he some things. I've heard some things about him, though that have, have got me feeling a little different and uh and but these are like intangible things and i understand these are not the things that you know necessarily show up on the field or translate but like i heard something where uh in the locker room and training camp where he said like he got on the team about not picking up after themselves he's like hey you know it's not you know, the janitor that like, takes the garbage out it's not their job to pick up after you off the floor and whatever else like you know stuff like that and it's like okay like if that's the way you're wired um I think you're going to be okay. Like you at least have like the DNA to set yourself up for success. It's your and, instinct to like lead. Yes. And so, you know, I mean, there's no, there's no denying that he's got the skills that are needed um, sure. to be successful. And I think, you know, we've seen many guys come out of college to have tremendous skill sets, but when it comes to like putting that together with all those intangible things and leadership, um, you know, they've fallen short. And so, you know, we'll see what happens, but like I'm kind of changing my um, expectation a little bit. Like I, I think that that he has a fighting chance. Um, it, it just the the Bears have been in that organization that's been a little dysfunctional. A little. So it's just a matter of like, are they going to give him what he needs to have an opportunity to be successful? I th- I don't think we got the right perspective on Caleb Williams last year because the more time that goes by, I mean, he's looked pretty decent. I would say in the preseason thus far. And I think some of the leadership stuff you're talking about, I was reading about that as well. And I th- I wonder if perhaps at USC last year, uh, Lincoln Riley did not recruit a defense at all. And I think that that's frustrating for a guy like Caleb Williams, who's laying it out on the field. I mean, yes, he had a couple of bad games, which happens. But at the same time, he also, for the last couple of years, has shown that he has tremendous talent. And... Lincoln Riley really did him a disservice by the way that he structured that team in in totality. 
Yeah, and because what I said about him at, at USC was I felt like he would like intentionally extend plays to try to like play hero ball and stuff. Like he wouldn't, you know, he didn't appear to me to be the type of guy that would stand in the pocket and like go through a progression. It's like he he wanted to create his own offense and this and that. But like if you're playing, if you know that you're gonna have to score 50 points to even stand yes. a chance to win, like you're gonna play outside yourself. And and, and it's a hard you, you can't like it's really hard, I, I have to imagine to decipher between like when like it's okay to play within the system and when you have to go make a play, you know? And so if you get like hardwired that like, Hey, I have to go make a play and we got to score 50 points. Otherwise we don't stand a chance to win because we're not going to stop anybody. Like it's really hard to reel that back in. And, and so I think that you can't blame them so much. And, and, and I know I've been, I was extremely critical of them, but it's really hard to blame him for doing the things he did under the circumstances that he did, that he did them. And so now we'll see, I don't know what type of defense the bears have put together for him. And, um, you know, like I said, there's a lot to be determined. He's going to, he's going to face adversity as a rookie. Uh, it doesn't matter what's around him. He's going to face adversity and we'll see how he handles that. Yep. But you know, the, I think what we could all say though, is he's going to have a chance. He's going to have an opportunity to, to um, prove himself. and. I think he has a better chance of succeeding than I originally anticipated. Look at you. A little bit of growth saying, look, yeah. I might have been wrong. I mean, that's what we do here on this show.